Hello, drummers and other creatures. This is the second part of my introductory series to jazz drumming, which basically means just the, the swing cymbal stuff that we know and love from the olden days. That's what most people think of as jazz drumming anyway. In the first video, I showed you how to play the standard swing, dang, dang, a dang, spang, a lang, walk the dog pattern that we all know and love. And that's the, the very fundamental rhythmic idea that underlies all of this stuff. So you need to be able to do that reasonably competently in order to move on to the next bit, which is going to be a little bit of comping. Comping is the melodic embellishments we make to the swing pattern um, with the snare and the bass drum by and large and other elements of the kit too. But we're gonna get started in a nice basic way and uh, hopefully you find it easy to follow along. Make sure you watch the first video before this and, and you're comfortable playing the spang, spang, a lang, dang, a dang, whatever pattern you like to call it, okay? In the first video, we got this going. In the first video also I gave you the option of adding the bass drum, but this video is bass drum free. You will not have to worry about your bass drum because we're gonna focus on adding some snare drum embellishments to get started with. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna proceed with sort of two ideas and then sort of mix them together. And uh, I think I'm going with the easiest option first but you might jump to the second bit if you find this at all fiddly. And as with all these things, a lot of patience is needed. Take everything really slowly and give yourself time to get used to this if you've never done it before. Uh, so if you find anything I'm demonstrating here a bit tricky to do, don't worry, persevere and you'll definitely get it eventually. A lot of these things do take time. They're not instantaneous, even if it looks like it in a 10 minute YouTube video. Anyway. What are we gonna do? We're gonna think about the swing pattern. Dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang. And we're thinking there are two elements, the dang and the ga dang. Dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna play a snare drum stroke in the little gap there. Dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang, dang, ga dang. Okay, step one would be to get our cymbal stroke, cymbal stroke, to get our cymbal pattern going, get the hi-hat going, make that feel good, and then we're going to drop the snare drum in the little gap. But at first we're going to play and notice the gap. That's, that's the first thing. Notice the little gap, and then you can drop your hand in there. Okay, I'm gonna do it at a fairly slow pace. You might even want to slow it beyond that. See what works. Now perhaps the first time you try that, it doesn't come out. It's, it's not easy to place these things together, especially if you've, you've played the drums before and you're used to the sort of coordination involved in eighth note rock beats, 16th note rock beats. This is a little bit asymmetrical and we're working with our limbs in a, in a different way to what we're used to. And you might find yourself wanting to really slow it down and be methodical. Danga danga.
So that's our first snare comp. If you know how to count it, it's on the end of one or the end of three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... <laughs> Ooh, I used the bass drum, but you're not allowed. No bass drum for you yet. Now, that was our first snare comping option. The and of one, and of three, the gap between dang and gadang. Next, we're going to play the and of two and the and of four, and that happens on the ga, right? Dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang, dang, ga, dang. Now, you may find the coordination a little bit more tricky, but I'm going to start off just playing the swing pattern with my foot, uh, playing the two and four, obviously, and then uh, putting that snare drum note there in the gadang. So you might find that you can just go ahead and do that. Nope, no bass for you, only me allowed at the moment. Okay, gadang. Now, same, if you can't get that to happen straight away, don't worry, there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to work out the coordination with a little bit more care and attention to start with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just think of gadang, and remember this little snare drum stroke. Huh? The little snare drum stroke is on Gadang, the first of two cymbal notes that I'm going to play. Ooh, that was very heavy. Let's try again. That's better. Now, the hi-hat foot is going to be on the individual dang, so it shouldn't really get too much in the way of the snare drum note. Okay, now, once you're able to coordinate each one of those, the one in the gap and the one on the ga of the gadang, so that's your one and slash three and, and then your two and slash four and, um, you can try maybe to pay a little bit of attention to your stroke. We want to play the snare dead in the middle most of the time for this sort of stuff, where you get a nice, clear, articulate, dry sound, and you want to play a really small stroke, meaning you don't want to make too much sound with the thing. We want a, a little, nice, tight, crisp, little snappy sound. Um, the reason being, as I explained in the first video, is that the, the rhythmic component of this music is given by the, the ride cymbal and then the hi-hat, and the snare and then the bass drum, which we'll get to, but not today, um, and not in this video anyway, um, the snare drum and the bass drum add a sort of melodic embellishment, but the main drive for the whole thing is coming from the, the ride cymbal or the hi-hat if you're playing that. Um, so the snare, we want this nice, crisp and polite sound. Um, what I recommend doing is getting in the habit with, with this type of music, instead of playing a stroke where you kind of cock the stick back and throw it down like so, is you kind of hold it more or less parallel to the snare, a couple of centimeters above, and just play your stroke down into the snare. So the kind of starting point is parallel minus one degree to the floor. 
I don't know, I don't know if you can see the stick on the snare, and on the hi-hat it looks like this. And some people are clever enough to completely eliminate any kind of preparatory pulling back of the stick. I don't know if I have, but I'm just playing a little stroke down into the drum. Okay, now I would start to focus on that sort of thing once you're feeling comfortable with the coordination of both of those options. So, in the gap, and then on the ga of the gadang. In the gap, on the ga of the gadang. Let's play four bars of the first one in the gap, four bars of the second one in the ga of the gadang, like this. I think I lost track of that somewhere in the middle, but you know, there's, you know, make sure you keep counting, but just something like that. You want, you want to get the feeling that you can make choices to play either one of those uh, snare drum embellishments, the gap, the ga of the gadang. Now, let's see if we can put that together, meaning that we'd be playing all the ands. Dang, da, dang, da, dang, da, ugh, what am I doing? Dang, dang, da, dang, dang, da, dang. I don't know what I'm, I'm singing now. Let's, let's start that again. I'm not cutting these videos. Dang, dang, da, 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 dang. Authorized bass from you until you've mastered this. Okay, so that makes sense. Now, I, I, I don't know how long this is going to take you. It's probably more than 10 or 15 minutes, right? It takes a little while to get the hang of this. Once you've assimilated those options, you want to work towards being able to play uh, on the ands, basically, spontaneously, any time you want to, right? And so where you're going to end up, and, and you can... As soon as you feel even remotely comfortable with one of these patterns, go ahead and try to improvise with it a little bit and see what happens. Um, but, you know, let me... I'll, I'll do a kind of chorus of Bye Bye Blackbird and demonstrate how I'm improvising with this. have it. Introduction to snare drum comping. Get yourself really comfortable with that. In my next video, we'll add the bass drum and then all sorts of exciting shenanigans will occur. And that will be that for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. 
if you would like some one-on-one -on -one help with your drumming. I forgot to do that earlier on in the video, silly me, terrible marketing man. Um, but if you'd like some help with your drumming and you like my patter, you like the way I present things and so on and so on, you may enjoy having some one-on-one -on -one lessons with me, in which case get in touch via the contact details that you'll find in the description box below this video. Uh, I'm also, um, you know, asking uh, whatever it is, I've got the, the begging bowl out, so to speak, and you can buy me a coffee if you feel like you just like to make a one-off contribution uh, to whatever this whole thing is about. So uh, that's all really. Uh, go away and practice.